um, let us start with the course. Um, the first topic to cover is uh, the basics about the Riemann sphere, some basic notions and facts. Um, we are going to present three realizations of the Riemann sphere, namely as the extended complex plane, as the complex projective line, and as a unit sphere in three-dimensional Euclidean space. Uh, why three, why, why do we give three incarnations of the Riemann sphere? Well, because as uh, you may already expect, uh, sometimes in one of the, for one of the models, there are uh, certain statements theorems or, or properties that are easier to prove or, e or, um, or easier to state in a conceptual way than uh, in the other uh, models. So, and then, and then we, we are going to try to, um, to, to always uh, state or, or prove things um, for the model that, 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 that is like more, more suitable for, for uh, for, for those purposes. Okay, so uh, let's start with the extended complex plane, which is defined uh, as a set um, as the as, 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 as the set C bar uh, obtained by adjoining a point at infinity to the complex plane. So we have the complex plane and then we adjoin, we, we put one extra point at infinity uh, with certain topology. A topology where all the open uh, subsets of C are open for C bar. And moreover, the, the complements in C bar of the compact subsets of C. Mm -hmm. so, so every time we have a, a, a uh, a compact set, a compact subset of C, we take its complement, but together with the, with, with the point at infinity, because it's the complex in C bar, it's the, it's the complement in C bar, uh -huh. and that complement is the, uh, we declare it to be um, an open set of C bar. Okay, um, so uh, some, uh, some uh, an, an easy exercise in uh, general topology is to, to verify that uh, this is indeed a topology for C bar, mm -hmm. that C bar is compact, mm -hmm. uh, and that the complex numbers form a dense uh, set, a dense open set in C bar. Mm -hmm. uh, this, is, this, this is actually a, a, a special case of a general construction, namely that of the one point compactification of a topological space. So, so, so the extended complex plane is defined as the one-point compactification uh, of the complex plane. Um, okay, so the first thing to note about C bar is that uh, it is a Riemann surface and that it is very easy to give a complex atlas for it. Um, so, uh, what is a complex atlas? A complex atlas is a collection of charts that cover the whole space, in this case, C bar, mm -hmm. uh, and are uh, pairwise uh, holomorphically compatible. What does it mean for two charts to be holomorphically compatible? Well, that the transition maps uh, are uh, biholomorphic uh, in the usual sense of complex analysis as uh, functions from, uh, from some open subset of C to some open subset of C. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, if, we, if we try to, 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 to give a complex atlas for C bar, well, we see that, that there's an open subset which, which can be, for which, 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 which is easily seen to be mapped holomorph uh, homeomorphically to an open set of the complex numbers, namely C, which is of course an open set of C bar. So C 
can be mapped homeomorphically to uh, to to to, us, to an open set of C, yeah, with uh, just with the identity of the complex numbers, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, and and uh, once we we we've, we've noticed that, uh, we see that there's only one more point left in C bar to cover, namely infinity. So so we 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 only need one more chart that uh, uh, containing infinity and uh, so that uh, and such that the the, the transition uh, function uh, be um, uh, holomorphic. Okay, so so for that we we, uh, uh, we we now we now put back infinity, but then in order to, to be able to land in the complex numbers, then then uh, we take out some other point. So here we take we take uh, zero off the set. Mm -hmm. So in order to have to have a, a chance of landing in the complex numbers, okay. And, and then how do we go to the complex numbers? Well, a, 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 a moment of thought uh, tells us that that we have to take uh, the inversion. So that set to, we need to take every z to one over z. Of course, with the convention that one over infinity is zero, one divided by infinity is zero, which we take as a convention. Okay, once 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 we've done that, once we've done once we we've taken these two charts, then we realize that the transition functions go from the the punctured um, uh, uh, plane to the punctured plane, and are given precisely by sending z to one over z in both ways. And we know that sending z to one over z is holomorphic on the punctured plane. So um, we see that these two charts are indeed holomorphically compatible. And then since we have a re since we have now covered the whole C bar, um, we see that they form then a complex atlas. Mm -hmm. So they they define a complex structure for uh, C bar. So what is a complex structure? Uh, well, uh, you can define it to be an equivalence class of, uh, of uh, uh, an analytically compatible atlases or holomorphically compatible atlases, or as a maximal um, uh, as a maximal complex atlas. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, either either definition uh, is good for me. Um, okay, so so with with this with this uh, lemma. We have given a C bar uh, complex structure, which makes it a Riemann surface because C bar satisfies the other requirements for being a Riemann surface, namely to be a Hausdorff topological space and uh, to have a countable basis for uh, uh, for its topology. So uh, C bar is a Riemann uh, surface. Okay, a couple of facts. Uh, the genus of C bar as a Riemann surface is zero, mm -hmm. where the genus of a Riemann surface is defined as the dimension uh, of the first cohomology group of the surface with coefficient in the sheaf of holomorphic functions. Um, so the sheaf of holomorphic functions from the open sets of the surface to C. Mm -hmm. um, which I would have to, to tell you what it means uh, what it means uh, for a function defined on a, on an open set of a of a Riemann surface um, to be and going for and going to the complex numbers to be holomorphic mm -hmm. um, and I have not really done that so far okay um, and then another fact is that uh, that uh, uh, the Riemann Roch theorem so the, the famous theorem of uh, Riemann Roch has as a consequence that uh, any compact Riemann surface of genus zero uh, is biholomorphic to Z bar, uh, or in other words, is uh, isomorphic as a Riemann surface to C bar. Um, that is, up to isomorphisms of Riemann surfaces, there is only one Riemann surface of genus zero. And, well, we have just found it.
that's somehow the the the, 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 the moral of these facts the moral the, the moral of the story okay so let me give a definition um, of uh, what it means for a function from an open subset of C bar to Z bar to be holomorphic. Mm -hmm. So we say it is it is uh, holomorphic if for every chart in the codomain and every chart in the domain mm -hmm. uh, and, and, it, and, and it, it should be sorry for every chart in the codomain and every chart of, 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 of C bar, but seeing it as, as, a, as a superset of the domain, of the domain V, uh, the part, of, the part of, of, of that chart that goes to the other chart of the codomain is uh, holomorphic. OK. Uh, this, 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 you can see the, the corresponding picture uh, here, here this, this, this one on top. Uh, this is, that's exactly what I mean um, for, a, for a function defined on, a, on an open set V and going to C bar to be um, uh, holomorphic. Okay, now um, for such an open uh, subset of C bar, um, let uh, MV to be the set of all uh, holomorphic functions that go to C bar, but are not the constant function with constant value infinity. In other words, uh, we consider the set of all holomorphic functions that go from V to C bar, and we only exclude the, the constant function with constant value infinity. We exclude it, and uh, after excluding it, we form this, uh, this set, mm -hmm. which uh, those who have uh, taken uh, some course on Riemann surfaces before will recognize uh, as uh, the set of meromorphic functions on V. So this is this is, this uh, this is the the set of meromorphic functions on V. Mm -hmm. um, okay, and then the, the 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 there's an interesting fact which is that um, well first of all. Uh, it always is um, a commutative C algebra, so a commutative uh, uh, algebra over the complex numbers uh, with, with the operations defined naturally and, uh, and somehow point wisely almost everywhere. I will, I will go into, into that in a moment. Mm -hmm. um, and if the set is connected, then uh, MV is, is actually a uh, a field, not only a uh, not only a commutative C algebra. Mm -hmm. So how how are the sum of meromorphic functions and the product of meromorphic functions defined? So you see, uh, we would like to do it uh, point wisely as usual, mm -hmm. but uh, there is a problem in the in the case of poles. So take take a, take a, take two two elements here. Um, so so there could be a point here in V where either f or g take the value infinity, and then there is a problem in defining f plus g um, or f times g at that point. Um, of course, one would be tempted to say, okay, if if uh, if uh, if uh, f of x is infinity and g of x is infinity, then just define um, uh, f plus g to be infinity. Right? Um, that naive idea is not quite correct because, for instance, one would be wanting to add uh, 1 over z with minus 1 over z. Then what do you do? I mean, uh, I mean, uh, um, on the one hand, you would like you would like to 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 define on uh, uh, the, the sum in z equal to zero to be infinity, but but zero on the rest of the plane, and then and then uh, it's not even it would not be even uh, continuous. So so this naive approach of of just saying okay whenever both or whenever one of them takes the value infinity just just set it to be infinity is not quite correct. So one needs a, a, a slightly more clever consideration, uh, which is the following. Um, 
So uh, we know that the set of poles of F and the set of poles of G um, are, 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 uh, do, do not accumulate. So, so uh, in other words, the, the, uh, the poles of F are all, all isolated and the poles of G are all isolated. Mm -hmm. um, and this, this means that, uh, that except for, for, uh, for a, a set consisting only of isolated points, um, one can define uh, F plus G and F times G point wisely. Why? Because uh, if I take a point which is neither a pole of F nor a pole of G, uh, then this means that uh, F evaluated in that point is a complex number and also G evaluated at that point is a complex number, I have no problem adding or multiplying. Okay, so, so, so on the complement in V, of the set of poles of F union the set of poles of G, uh, we can define F plus G and F times G uh, in a pointwise fashion. Mm -hmm. uh, and then to define it in the, in the, in the remaining points, one actually uses uh, a famous theorem of Riemann, the, the, namely the, the uh, Riemann's remo removable singularities theorem. Um, and then we are done. Um, uh, another another way of of of, of doing of doing that is um, by by uh, mapping to 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 complex to, to subsets of the complex numbers via charts, and then to consider the the Laurent expansion, the Laurent expansions of F and G around the poles, uh, and then and then working with uh, with those Laurent expansions to 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 see how F plus G and F times G have to be defined in a, in a point which is either a pole of F or a pole of G. Okay, in the end, one obtains a, a, a holomorphic function defined on the whole of V and landing again in C bar. And this is how uh, the sum and the product of MV are defined. Um, Okay, and then notice that this can be done for any open set V. It, 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 you don't need it to be uh, connected to, to define this uh, addition and this uh, product. Now, uh, when does the, does the connectedness of V play a role? Um, well, if, uh, if, if, um, if V is connected, then the set of poles of of uh, of f is well uh, here I shouldn't have said finite, but um, I should say that it does not accumulate. Um, so uh, except for 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 uh, this set of points. Uh, where did I say poles? No, sorry, I said I, I meant to say zeros. Mm -hmm. If uh, if I have a non-zero element of M V, uh, then then uh, then its set of zeros, so the set of, of, of points in V where F takes the value zero, um, does not accumulate, and this is because V is connected. Mm -hmm. And once we know it doesn't accumulate, uh, we can we can define one over F. In the complement of, of 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 the set of zeros of zeros of f, mm -hmm. and and then one can verify that uh, that that defining one over f in a C, one over f in a zero of f to be infinity, then uh, then we have a a, a function defined on the whole of V and homeomorph holomorphic on the whole of V. Mm -hmm. uh, in other words, the zeros of F become the poles of one over F uh, and they form a, um, a, a set that does not accumulate because V is connected. Mm -hmm. Notice if, 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 if V were not connected, then one can take a, a two um, connected components and then one can say, okay, take, uh, let's say, um, the, the function that takes the value constant equal to one on one of the components and equal to zero on the other components, and then this fails, 
And when I try to define one over F, uh, I have problems. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Uh, okay. So 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 when when V is connected, uh, the 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 C algebra of uh, meromorphic functions on V is actually a field. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, this, this, these results, the next results that we state, uh, they, they, they merely, they merely uh, remind us that first, if I have a polynomial with coefficients in C, this polynomial um, defines or induces a polynomial function that goes from C to C. Mm -hmm. And note that if my polynomial uh, has positive degree, then I can, then by defining f of, inf by defining the value of the function at infinity to be infinity, what I obtain is, is not only a polynomial function from C to C, but from C bar to C bar. Um, and if, if the polynomial has uh, degree zero or degree minus infinity, if it's the zero polynomial, uh, then there's no problem. It can be it can be defined uh, um, on on the whole of, of of C bar. No problem. Okay. So so in other words, if I have a polynomial, uh, this polynomial induces a polynomial function that that can be defined as a function not only from C to C but actually from C bar to C bar. So I can fill in that that little hole which is uh, the point at infinity. Uh, okay. Um, and of course. Uh, the assignment that to each polynomial assigns associates its uh, polynomial function is a, a is a c linear ring homomorphism that that sends one to one so it's a unitary ring homomorphism mm -hmm. and moreover um, it actually induces a, 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 an injective um, ring homomorphism from uh, from the set of rational functions. From the field of rational functions with co with com with uh, complex coefficients uh, to the uh, set of um, holomorphic functions from C to C. Mm -hmm. So to each quotient of polynomials, which is just a formal quotient of formal polynomials, um, it associates the, the 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 function given by dividing the evaluation of f at any given point by the evaluation of g at any given point. And of course, playing playing the corresponding uh, the corresponding um, uh, game uh, of the poles, right? Or if you want, um, uh, if in 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 the roots of G, one one applies or one plays the game of Riemann's removable singular singularity sphere. Okay, um, okay, um, and now. One thing uh, to notice uh, is that if I have two non-zero polynomials and uh, and they span the same vector subspace of the polynomial ring, that is, if one is if one is a, a, a complex multiple of the other, let's say that f is equal to alpha g, say with alpha in c, uh, then the the, the the function defined by the by the by the quotient is constant, and in this case it would be uh, just the constant equal to alpha, right? So easy observation, mm -hmm. um, which is so. So, so in order to define a function from c bar to, to c bar, which is not constant, uh, using just quotients of polynomials, um, uh, first of all, I I need I need to uh, the polynomials to be linearly independent over c. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, now an exercise, uh, which is it's a, it's a, it's a well-known fact. It's a standard fact. You can you can find it in uh, in the um, in, in 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 any book on uh, on Riemann surfaces. Um, but still, uh, I would like you to try to solve it without um, without recurring to the to the literature um, to solve it by yourselves. Uh, and 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 it says that the that every meromorphic function on C bar is the quotient of two polynomials. So every meromorphic function is rational. It's what what uh, what the theorem says, what this exercise says. 
Um, yeah, because on the other hand, we, we already have an, an inject, we already have an injective uh, C linear ring homomorphism. So, um, so this is this is this is this is very nice that that meromorphic functions on C bar are precisely the rational functions. Okay, so that's 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 uh, as far as it goes um, about uh, uh, C bar as a Riemann surface. Mm -hmm. So before moving on to the next model of the Riemann sphere, let us introduce two notions that are going to appear over and over again throughout the course, namely the notions of a circle in C bar and disk in C bar. So, so C bar is a set that is slightly larger than C, right? Because it's, it's the complex numbers and one more point, namely the point at infinity. So, so we would like to keep calling circles the circles in C. And we will. Mm -hmm. So circles in C, they are declared to be circles in C bar. Mm -hmm. But there, there is a second type of uh, of objects that we are going to call circles in C bar, namely uh, any set of the form straight line in C union infinity. Mm -hmm. Now the straight line we don't require to have uh, to pass through the origin nothing. Mm -hmm. So anything of the form straight line union in infinity is declared to be a circle in C bar. Mm -hmm. So there are two types of circles in C bar, the usual ones, which are circles in C, and this uh, new type of circle. Okay. Um, likewise, uh, they're going to, there, there's, there, there, there's, there's uh, new types of disks. So uh, take any circle in C bar, mm -hmm. This circle in C bar, regardless of whether it is a circle in C or whether it's a set of the form straight line union infinity, um, when we delete it, uh, it splits C bar, well, the, its complement in C bar is split in uh, two connected components. Mm -hmm. These two connected components are going to be called open disks in C bar. Mm -hmm. um, so, for instance, take a circle in C. Mm -hmm. A circle in C. Uh, we are all used to calling uh, this region uh, an open disk in C. Yeah, okay. But now we are also saying that its complement in C bar, which also has a point, the point at infinity, um, is going to be called a, an open disk. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And now in the case of a, of a set of the form L union infinity, mm -hmm, notice. <clears throat> Notice that the complement of such a thing in C bar uh, is the union of two half planes. Both of these half planes uh, are going to be called open disks in C bar or just disk in C bar. <coughs> okay. Um, now, why why this definition? Well, um, we are one of the reasons is a stereographic projection that we're going to see uh, uh, later on. So somehow this, this definition is somehow engineered in such a way so as to have the stereographic projection send circles to circles and disks to disks between the sphere and C bar, mm -hmm. between the, the unit sphere in R3 and C bar. Okay, um, now let's move on to uh, the complex projective line, mm -hmm. um, which is, as a set, just uh, the set of all one-dimensional C vector subspaces of, of uh, C square, of this two-dimensional uh, complex vector space, mm -hmm. that we call uh, the complex projective line and denote by P1C. Mm -hmm. So it's just the Grassmannian of one-dimensional subspaces of this two-dimensional um, space. Now, with which topology? Um, the so-called uh, analytic topology. Mm -hmm. Now, how, how, how is this analytic topology defined? Well, um, consider C square, mm -hmm. okay? And then in C square, put, uh, let's say, a, a, a Hermitian um, 
a Hermitian and bilinear form, a Hermitian product, um, or even an, 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 Euclid, an interior product, let's say, whatever. Uh -huh. the, the thing is uh, that such, 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 uh, such a Hermitian or interior product uh, induces a norm in, uh, in C square. Mm -hmm. And this norm uh, induces a topology because uh, it, it makes of C square uh, a metric space. Right? And, and actually, it's a, it's, a, it's a very nice theorem that uh, in, a, in a finite dimensional real vector space, C squared is finite dimensional real vector space, uh, any two norms um, induce the same topology. Mm -hmm. So take any, any norm for, for, uh, for a C squared, any Hermitian product, to be more concrete, um, and then it induces a topology by considering the norm, the norm it induces. Uh, this topology is what we call the, the analytic topology of C squared. Mm -hmm. Well, so C squared has an analytic topology. So C squared minus zero has an, an analytic topology. I mean, minus, minus the zero vector, right? So, so here maybe, let me, let me write um, this just, just to avoid confusion. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so, so we, know what, we know what that analytic topology for C squared minus zero is. Mm -hmm. And now notice that, uh, that there is a tautological function from c squared minus zero to p1c, namely the function that to each non-zero vector associates the one-dimensional um, vector subspace it spans in c squared. Okay, and then of course every one-dimensional vector subspace of c squared is spanned by at least one non-zero vector. So um, so this function is surjective, mm -hmm. which means that we can use it uh, to impose uh, an identification topology on this, namely uh, the, a topology that makes this function continuous, but is maximal with respect to this property. So in, in other words, uh, um, in other words, uh, it makes it continuous, but also uh, um, it, it, it has all possible open sets um, whose inverse image is open. So, so to, to be to be more, um, to, to, to to say it uh, um, um, uh, more more correctly, uh, one has a topology here defined by declaring an open set here to be any subset whose inverse image under this function is uh, open. So yet, yet, yet said, said again, is that if they give me an open subset of P1C, I declare it to be open if and only if its pre-image under the function is open. Mm -hmm. um, so, 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 so in other words, this topology not only makes this function continuous, but somehow it is absolutely impossible to put any any more open sets to declare more open sets here. It's just impossible. They are all all, all the all the all the sets that that are supposed to be open are already there, uh, keeping the function conti continuous, right? In other words, uh, if I put just one more open set, the function stops being continuous. Okay, so this is the. The, the, the identification topology for uh, this surjective function. Mm -hmm. And that topology is what we call uh, the analytic topology of P1C. Um, so the open sets of P1C are precisely those sets whose inverse image is open in C squared minus zero. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Uh, of course, of course, you might be saying, okay, but, but wait, 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 uh, P1C uh, is a projective, it's an algebraic variety, it's a projective variety. Sure, but with a different topology, the so-called Sarisky topology. And I leave you as an exercise uh, to, 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 to say what is the relation uh, between the two topologies, the, the analytic topology that we have just defined mm -hmm. and the Sarisky topology. Mm -hmm. that, that makes it a projective algebraic variety. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, uh, consider just C. Mm -hmm. uh, 
C, it's, it's, a, it's an, 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 an affine algebraic variety. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, what are its open sets as, as affine algebraic variety? Well, they are precisely the complements. Um, well, they are, they are the empty set and the complements of um, the finite subsets of C. Um, so so the, the, opens, the open sets of C as a, in, the, in the Sarisky topology are very large. Right? Um, but the, notice that uh, every open set of C according to the Sarisky topology uh, is an open set in the analytic topology of C. Mm -hmm. But the converse is obviously not true. Right? So any, any open disk in C uh, in, is open in the analytic topology, but it is not uh, it's a risky open. Mm -hmm. So the exercise is to, 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 to give the, the, the analog uh, the analog of what, what, what I, of what I just discussed, but for P1C. So to say what's the relation between uh, the Sarisky and the analytic topologies of um, P1C. Okay. Um, right, so, 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 P1C, okay, so, 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 take a basis of, uh, take an ordered basis of, uh, um, of C square. Mm -hmm. uh, now, the thing is, I mean, we know that choosing a basis by, by, by fixing a, uh, an ordered basis, um, fixing an ordered basis gives us a way of parameterizing, in this case, C square, the vector space C square, uh, with, with totals of complex numbers, right? I mean, in general, uh, if they give me a, uh, a, vector, a, a, a vector space, uh -huh, then fixing a basis of that vector space allows me to parameterize the points of that vector space by objectively using uh, tuples of elements of the field, which in this case our field is uh, the complex numbers. Right? So, uh, so what we do here is to show that, to, to, to study how the choice of any ordered basis allows us to parameterize the points of P1C by objectively uh, with elements of, uh, of C bar. Mm -hmm. So um, take a, fix an, order, an ordered basis, uh, and then uh, every non-zero vector can be, of course, written as a C linear combination uh, with coefficients in, in the complex numbers. Since V is, is, not, the, is not the zero vector, um, we know that either alpha or beta, at least one of them, is not zero. Mm -hmm. And we analyze case by case. Uh, we, of course, have beta is either zero or not. Right? So if it is not, then we can divide by beta. Mm -hmm. And while the vector, of course, changes, the one-dimensional vector subspace, it spans, does not change whatsoever. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, if beta is zero, then alpha must be not zero, and we can divide by alpha. And in that case, while, while the vector itself may change, when we divide by alpha, the one-dimensional vector space uh, it, uh, it spans does not change. Mm -hmm. So this means that, that, that any one-dimensional vector subspace of C square can be written either can be written either as the vector space spanned by a vector that is given as complex number times V1 plus one times V2, or give or by a vector of the form one, zero, okay? Um, in other words, uh, use, u using this basis, we, we've, we've seen that we can make, uh, uh, we can make to, each, to each one dimensional complex vector subspace of C square, um, an element of C bar, namely either the complex number, either this complex number, or the point at infinity in, the, in this case. Mm -hmm. Notice that, that, uh, that, uh, that when beta is, that there's only one one-dimensional vector subspace of C square spanned by vectors whose 
second coordinate in v in v2 who, whose coordinate in v2 is zero okay? in, in other words in other words there's only one one dimensional vector space of this form of this form with respect to this basis if we change the basis then then, then of course things move move a little bit but i'm not changing the basis mm -hmm. um, it is very easy to see that the function that goes from c bar to p1c that to each complex number associates this vector space which would be in this case mm -hmm. Um, and to infinity associates this other vector space uh, is actually a bijection. So this is this is very easy. Actually, these considerations show that that function is uh, surjective. Mm -hmm. And I leave you as an exercise to show that uh, it's that it's it's actually a a homeomorphism between C bar and uh, the complex projective line. Mm -hmm. Um, now, don't forget that this function, this function depends on what on the a priori chosen the basis. So if we choose, if we instead of this basis we take another one, uh, this function is different. So, so we have one function for each basis. So this, don't forget that, um, and, and never be confused about that. Uh, about this uh, bijection between C bar and uh, the complex projective line. Um, so of course, of course, uh, uh, we cannot really draw uh, C square because its real dimension is four. Uh -huh. So, so we are going to to uh, to, to, to simplify the discussion, uh, work to working only with uh, R square, uh, which we can uh, draw. Um, Okay, so 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 in in R square. So suppose that our basis, our ordered basis, uh, v1 and v2 is like you are seeing here. Um, okay, and so you see if, when we are given a scalar, uh -huh, what phi does is that um, it looks at this vector uh, located at um, at a height one, height one with respect to v2. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then and then moves in the direction of v1, and then when whenever you look whenever you have whenever you locate this point on that line at height one, um, you take that uh, uh, subspace and that's the subspace that corresponds to your scalar. So at height one, right, and then move along the the, the uh, direction parallel to v1. So so here. Somehow, this tells us that uh, we have to draw a uh, a line parallel to V1. So somehow, this not this doesn't look very parallel. More or less like this, um, at height one. Right. Um, Okay, so so so, and then let, let's let's also uh, let's also so so for instance, if they if, if they give me the scalar uh, z equal to one half here here, uh, if they give me the set of the scalar equal to one half, somehow somehow I'm 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 uh, I have to. I have to. To 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 move here, so and then so I'm I'm here. This this would be the point of z v1 plus one times v2, and then to 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 the to the scalar one half, I would associate this one-dimensional vector subspace. Or uh, for instance, if they, if they gave me the scalar negative one, then I would have to move like here, but this one I have to move it. Uh, Along the the parallel line, so I would have to move more or less up to here. I think more or less. I mean this this has to be this. Well, more or less. Mm -hmm. Okay. So so if they give me the negative one, I'm I uh, I uh, this this would be the point uh, z v one plus one v v two where with z equal to negative one. Okay. And once once I locate that point, 
um, I consider the one-dimensional vector subspace passing through that point, and that's the vector subspace that I associate uh, to this point. Mm -hmm. So, so somehow, 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 uh, the way uh, somehow z z the way z I, I allowed z to move somehow here, I transport it, I translate it here. Uh -huh. To, to give me a point, and once I get the point, uh, that is how I associate uh, uh, the, the, the one-dimensional vector space to the scalar z. That's one thing. And then second, notice if, if z is equal to infinity, what I do is, as I, is as I associate the, the this this vector subspace, which means which is the the space that is horizontal with respect to v1. So this means that that uh, to, the, to, to, to the scalar infinity, well, not to the scalar infinity, but to the point at, in, to the point at infinity, I associate precisely the vector space span, uh, spanned by V1. So, so you see somehow, 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 somehow you, you one moves along, along this line for finite points, and then, and then when one gets far away, far away, far away, far away, one reaches this, this, uh, this, this, comp this, um, this deep one dimensional uh, space so so somehow this one correspond somehow this this one corresponds to the point at infinity and then and and the points here corres correspond to the to the to the to the scalars z to the finite uh, sc uh, scalars um, okay uh, 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 now what what people usually do i mean the kind of the the the, the standard the the, 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 the what what most people do is, is uh, instead of taking the, uh, the, the basis to be uh, arbitrary, they take the basis to be the standard basis of, uh, of uh, C2. So, I mean, C square or R square or whatever square. Um, like this. So it's the standard one. So it, I have to draw them more or less with the same length. Um, not quite. More or less like this, I think. Uh -huh. And so this this would be uh, v two. V two it would be zero one, and v one would be uh, one zero. Mm -hmm. And then uh, then the, the, then the process that I just described that, that I just described is that uh, one. One draws, one draws uh, uh, on v two. One draws a uh, one-dimensional. Uh, one draws the one draws a line or a, or a or a or an affine plane, or a fine line, uh, parallel to this to this vector to this vector space to the sp space spanned by v one. So in this case, I would be I would be drawing uh, this parallel, this other horizontal line at height one. Um, okay, and then, and then, uh, if they give me a, a scalar z, well, I, I look where it is, right? Where it is, and then I transport it to height one. Uh -huh. And so he, this is the, this would be the vector z v one uh, plus one v two. Okay, and then I see I I I, um, I take the one dimensional vector subspace that passes through that point. And that's the one-dimensional vector subspace associated to the scalar z. And likewise, uh, to infinity, I associate the hor this horizontal one. Um, this, 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 this horizontal one, the, the vector space spanned by v1. And that's that's what people usually do. And then here you can see here here somehow these are defined somehow. Uh, the, the nice thing about this is that to 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 this one-dimensional uh, uh, space corresponds. This 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 scalar, right? I mean, kind kind of this scalar, but at height zero, uh, or ignoring ignoring the, the ignoring this height, if you want. Um, and so so the so so somehow it, uh, it intuitively is very it is very clear what's going on. Um, somehow the scalar one one is associated to all of these one-dimensional vector subspaces. Uh, somehow it's precisely the, the the intersection point of that space. With uh, with this with this translation of this vector space, this vector subspace, um, just ignoring the height one, right? Okay, 
and then for for the for the vector sub for the vector subspace which does not cross that that line at height one or that subspace at height height one that's translation of the space at height one um, well one just associates this one which is precisely precisely that same uh, um, um, sorry one associates infinity right uh, to, to this 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 one dimensional vector space what one associates infinity which is very in it's kind of it's it, 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 I would say it's very very um, intuitively consistent with the fact that that this one will never reach will never cross this line so so or if you want it crosses it at, crosses it at infinity so this is this is a little bit of uh, of the intuition um, um, and then for instance notice that uh, that while this bijection this bijection um, identifies for instance the ve this vector sends this vector um, this vector subspace to this point um, right so so it would it would it send it to this point namely to to z equal to 0 so while the scalar z equal to 0 here is represented by this point um, here here um, uh, so so how to say um, sorry let me rewind uh, the, the scalar z equal to 0 goes to uh, goes to uh, this vector subspace under the process I just said for this choice of basis v1 v2 okay okay but notice for this other basis the scale the, the scalar zero goes to this other vector space vector subspace likewise uh, infinity infinity goes to this vector space if we choose this base this basis v1 v2 but if we choose this other basis it it, it does not go to that subspace, but to this one, which is of course different to the to this one, right? Uh, so, so, so here, so with this, this uh, illustrates also how the how the, the bijection does de depend very strongly on, on which basis we choose. Um, okay, and now, now of course, of course, what, what the, these these drawings that I did are valid for. Uh, for the one-point compactification of the real numbers. Right? And uh, for the real projective line. So, so for these two spaces. So all, 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 all this description, this, this uh, intuitive description or geometric description that I just, that I just uh, drew, um, is valid for these two spaces. Um, yeah, okay, but we can we can think uh, uh, sch uh, kind of conceptually or, or um, um, schematically, if you will, uh, that uh, that somehow we are we are we are seeing the complex th that we see the complex numbers not like this, but but like this, you know, like the plane like this. Uh, so that so that uh, so that schematically we can think that this is actually the complex numbers. This is actually the complex numbers, but, but kind of but seen kind of a, a kind of kind of in a, in a funny way um, and 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 then under that this would be C and then uh, this would be this this would be this would be a copy of C the, the complex numbers and the, the one dimensional complex vector space would be like it would be like this right if we kind of if everything is seen, seen by this, on the side um, so somehow uh, schematically we can think that this um, that, uh, that this is like a copy of C, this is another copy of C, um, and that, that, that uh, under, under, this, under this bijection, uh, this, goes, this, this goes to C, and that, and that the point at infinity is somewhere, somewhere, let, let, let's write it, let's here on, on the left, somewhere, somewhere here, or, or on the right, yeah? I mean, whatever you want, right? Um, so as we can think and infinity right? and then uh, that this somehow crosses this here so, eh. okay in, in, in any case what, what, uh, my point is that that uh, a, a little bit schematically this we can still make kind of make sense mentally of this picture uh, for the complex numbers 
Okay. Um, so let's move on to um, to the to the to our to the third model of the Riemann sphere, which is uh, the the unit sphere in R three. Mm -hmm. So the unit sphere in R three. So not, not 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 much more to say there. Mm -hmm. With a, with the topology in it inherits as a subset of R three. Mm -hmm. uh, there's another way of putting a topology in 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 in, in the unit sphere, namely by considering the chordal metric on, on the sphere. Mm -hmm. um, which, 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 which says that, 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 that uh, if you give me two points on the sphere, uh, the distance, you, you, you define that an, an, a distance between those two points by considering not, not, the, the, segment, the, not the, the, the Euclidean leg length of the, of the straight line segment that joins them, but the Euclidean length of the of the curve, you know, of the maximal of, of the segment of maximal circle in the sphere that joins them. Um, well, it turns out that, that 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 the metric that the chordal metric induces the same topology on the sphere as um, as just this one. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Um, in other words, defining 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 a uh, you know the distance between two points of the sphere, either to be the, dis the, the Euclidean distance between them in R three, or the, the distance between them on the sphere. Mm -hmm. If we if we define if we consider these two metrics on S two, they are not the same metric, of course, but they do induce the same topology. Mm -hmm. um, okay, um, now. Uh, the stereographic projections that, that I already mentioned before. So they are functions uh, that, 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 um, that go from, from the sphere to C bar and, 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 and vice versa, and conversely, mm -hmm. given by these rules. So from the sphere to C bar, uh, this, uh, point, this point on the sphere is mapped to this point in C bar, and, and, um, and this point in, in C bar, well, here is as a complex number, right? I, I, I would have to say at infinity, uh -huh, but let's say a complex number here, here in C would be mapped here, mm -hmm. and uh, the, the point at infinity would be mapped to the, to the, to the north pole, to 0, 0, 1. Okay, um, now, uh, where do these formulas come from? Mm -hmm. So it is, it is, it is a, uh, very easy to derive them uh -huh, because conceptually uh, what we do is um, let's say that let's say let's say that we we want to define uh, uh, p, uh, p and q so so take consider the north pole so the point zero zero one mm -hmm. okay and then uh, take any straight line passing through 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 that north pole mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay um, and then, if it's, if the line is not horizontal, uh, then uh, let's say that it intersects the sphere in this point and uh, the complex plane in, in this point. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and then what we do is we we declare p to map this point to this point, and q to map this point to this point. Mm -hmm. And then one one uh, one place a little bit of a um, Three-dimensional analytic geometry mm -hmm. to find, uh, you know, uh, the parameters, uh, uh, the parameters, you know, in order in order to 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 uh, to see if I'm given if I'm if I'm given uh, this point, mm -hmm, if I'm given this point, what should be the coordinates of this point, right, and vice versa. Mm -hmm. And that is how one arrives to these formulas. Mm -hmm. And I, I leave it to you as an exercise to derive to derive these two these two formulas. Uh -huh. So it's it's a it's a it's an easy exercise. It's it's, it's not a hard exercise. Um, but but I don't want to spend too much time deriving the the, the whole formulas. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And then the next exercise, besides this one that I just said, is that these two functions. Are mutually inverse diffeomorphisms. Mm -hmm. So it is it is it is fairly easy to show 
that, uh, that they are um, 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 inverse to each other, mm -hmm. um, but they are actually diffeomorphisms. And this, this I leave you uh, as an exercise. So notice that, that uh, since we, we gave a Riemann surface structure on C bar, so we, 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 we in particular gave a manifold structure for C bar. So, so the, the, the complex atlas is in particular an atlas as a, as a manifold. Um, so it is with respect to, 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 to that atlas that, uh, that, um, that uh, I, I, uh, I want you to, to show that it's a diffeomorphism. Um, yeah, and it's, it's, a, it's an atlas as a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a manifold of class C infinity, mm -hmm. where one defines a manifold to be of class C infinity uh, if the transition maps are always uh, of class C infinity. Mm -hmm. um, OK. Uh, and where one C is S2 um, as a sub-manifold, as a two-dimensional sub-manifold of this manifold, let's say. OK. Now, uh, as I said, there, 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 was something, there was something about the definition of, uh, of the notion of circle in C bar and disk in C bar, right? Like, uh, why is that a natural definition? And what makes it natural is uh, this theorem um, that says that, uh, uh, that the stereographic projections, that the stereographic projections um, send circles to circles. So, so P sends circles in S2 to circles in C bar mm -hmm. with uh, with this notion of circle in C bar that we that we saw, mm -hmm. and Q sends circles in C bar to circles in in uh, in, uh, in the sphere in S2. Mm -hmm. um, what is a circle in S2? Well, there are three three possible three equivalent possible definitions, um, namely. As an a circle in in, in 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 S2 can be defined to be an honest circle um, with respect to the to the chordal metric, mm -hmm. or it can be defined to be a uh, um, a circle using the 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 straight line metric, if you will to be the intersection of a plane with a, with S2. Mm -hmm. Or it can be defined to be the intersection of S2 with another sphere. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, excluding the, the, the degenerate cases where such intersections have only one point or have none. Right? OK, with either, with, the, you know, with, the, with either, with whatever definition you like most, mm -hmm. um, you, uh, uh, you, um, one has equivalence. Um, I mean, these three definitions are equivalent. This is an exercise. Mm -hmm. uh, and it turns out that the, um, the, the, the stereographic projections then send circles to circles and disks to disks. So they send circles to circles, hence disks to disks. Mm -hmm. OK. Um, before moving on, let me let me uh, let me um, say that that uh, I think one possible topic for student presentation would be a refinement of this theorem. So so this theorem, this theorem, which is an exercise whose proof is an exercise, says that the stereographic projections are diffeomorphisms, right? Mutually inverse, but mutually in showing that that they are mutually inverse. Um, is quite easy. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, right. Well, I would like you to. I want some. Stu I would like some student to make a presentation showing that they are actually conformal. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so for the proof of this theorem, the, which uh, states that uh, the stereographic projections send uh, circles in S two to circles in C bar and circles in C bar to circles in S2, um, uh, we, we, uh, we make two considerations. Um, one geometric, one uh, algebraic. So, so, so for the geometric one, the, the, the point is that um, there's an easy case, which is uh, that of the circles in the sphere passing through the North Pole and uh, the 
circles in C bar that pass through the point at infinity, i.e. Uh, the circles in C that are of the form straight line union infinity. Uh, why? Because uh, take a, take a, um, a circle uh, passing through the North Pole. So and, th and then and then take the plane in R three in which it is contained. So this plane, of course, contains uh, the North Pole. Okay, so it contains the North Pole. Uh, in its intersection with the sphere is is uh, is the is the the circle we were considering. Uh -huh. And the the thing is that there's the stereographic projection of this circle passing through the North, through the North Pole all happens inside this plane. So the image of uh, of the circle under the under P um, is uh, uh, is precisely the intersection of this plane with uh, with with the horizontal plane, which is the complex plane. Well, uh, uh, union infinity, which is the image of, uh, of of the North Pole. So so this this uh, this this makes it clear that P sends uh, circles passing through the North Pole to uh, circles in C bar containing infinity, which are the circles of the form straight line union infinity, uh, and vice versa. If you give me any 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 circle in C bar pass, uh, uh, passing through infinity, so it's, if you give me any circle in C of the form straight line union infinity, uh, well, take take the unique plane that contains that line and and the north pole, uh -huh, and then that plane uh, intersects the, 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 the unit sphere in a circle, and all the all all the all the the, the stereographic projection of this straight line union infinity happens inside here, right? I mean, all of the of the straight line happens inside here, so the image is actually that circle. Um, so that's that's the easy case, um, uh, and then, there, then then there's the hard case, which 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 is uh, which, uh, which is what happens with the with the circles that do not pass through the North Pole, the circles in the in the sphere that do not pass through the North Pole, uh, and the circles in C bar that that do not contain uh, infinity. That is the the, the circles uh, that um, uh, that are actually circles in C, honest circles in C, as as we we were used to. Before introducing these circles in C bar, uh, for those we we uh, we do some uh, basic uh, analytic geometry of uh, uh, basic three dimensional analytic geometry. Mm -hmm. um, so suppose suppose that that we have an, we have a plane uh, not passing through the North Pole, mm -hmm. um, and then just such that uh, you know that that that, uh, that 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 the intersection gives me an honest circle. So so. It doesn't give me, let's say, an empty circle. That the intersection is not empty, and that um, it, it's not a degenerate, so that it only consists of one point, right? So, so okay. So we suppose that it, uh, this plane, its intersection with the sphere, gives me an, an actual honest circle, mm -hmm. and then we can describe this plane um, as, as you know, via via um, a, a, a linear uh, equation. Uh, so we describe it via a linear equation. Okay. Now, uh, for any point on the sphere, uh, let us write uh, let us write in this way uh, its, uh, its its stereographic projection in the in the plane. Uh -huh. uh, here, here maybe I should say in S two minus the north pole, right? Um, which is which is which really doesn't is no problem because because in any case, um, I am assuming that L does not contain the north. Okay, so this is I, we denote by this uh, the projection of the, of any given point. Now, um, of course, of course, now using using that that p and q are uh, inverses are mutually in, mutually inverse. Um, we 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 see that that uh, that the point is uh, that the point is q of of its projection. Right? Okay, so we write it that way. Uh, okay, and then, the, and this can be done for any uh, point different from the North Pole, right? So we, we this this equality holds for any point in the in the one in the unit sphere different from the North. Okay, and now so so for such a point, it happens that it belongs 
well, it belongs to the to, to the intersection. It belongs to our to our given circle, uh, if and only if it belongs to, to the plane. If and only if uh, this point this this uh, this uh, coordinates these three numbers uh, satisfy the, the 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 linear equation defining the plane, mm -hmm. uh, which can be written this way. And notice that here here what I've done was just to to, to plug. This, uh, these three numbers into x, y, and z, and z here, uh, and then just and then just uh, multiply, you know, uh, um, multiply by the common denominator. So this is, this is why uh, here you here the, the common denominator appears multiplying d. Okay, um, right. So and and then here it's important that we have if and only if. Okay, uh, and if and only if, uh, you know, I, I perform a little simplification. Right. For instance, uh, c c ap c appears with uh, with uh, with uh, a square and with b square and d as well. Mm -hmm. So so I I write it I write it uh, you know in in a convenient way, thinking already that I want to 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 uh, to get to to uh, an equation of a circle in c. Right. So okay. So so this is this this is this is an easy. Um, you know, this is a re easy reorganization reorganization of, of of this equation. As I said, thinking already thinking already towards getting obtaining uh, 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 the equation of a circle in C. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, and once we have that, here there are two things to notice. Uh, one is that that uh, C plus D is not zero, and this is because the North Pole is not in L. So so so. Um, um, when we plug in, you know, uh, the North Pole zero zero one, this gives me not zero because the North Pole is not in L. Mm -hmm. uh, which and then you see this means that C plus D is not zero. Okay, so C plus D is not zero. First thing and second thing, uh, it, it so happens that that the, that the coefficient of a square here is equal to the coefficient of uh, b square. And that's kind of the key to actually get a, a circle because now I I I, uh, uh, I can I divide by by uh, c plus d and then yeah and then so it is very important that that that, that this this coefficient is equal to this coefficient mm -hmm. uh, and then finally so so after dividing this equation by uh, c plus d uh, which can, I think which can be reversed operation that can be reversed um, we uh, um, we complete squares. And uh, as we are used to, and then when we complete squares, we obtain uh, that that uh, that uh, then that we obtain what that the, if this was if this point was in L, then then its projection satisfy it satisfies the equation of a circle. Okay, so 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 this means that that the image of a circle the image of a circle in in S two under P is a circle in uh, C bar. Okay, but this process, all of this, we here we always have if and only if. I mean, all all of, all all the all the operations performed in each in each step uh, can be reversed. Uh -huh. um, for instance, here in the first step, we can we can we can divide by this. You know, we can divide by this and then obtain obtain uh, obtain that that uh, that a um, uh, and obtain that. Sorry, that these three points satisfy uh, this equation. Mm -hmm. um, okay, uh, and then uh, uh, here, uh, like here, we can let's say disorganize the, uh, the, the, this equation into this equation. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, uh, here, first we can we can just move all this part to the left. Uh, and then multiply, and then afterwards multiply by c plus d to obtain from this one, this one. Right? And in all cases, we always, uh, whenever we multiply or divide, we are always uh, multiplying or divided by dividing by something different from zero. So, so every every step can be undone. Mm -hmm. And then this fact that every step can be undone tells us that the image of a circle in uh, in C. Is a circle in S two that does not contain the North Pole, and then this finishes the proof. And then, uh, well, here, as uh, as I mentioned, um, this topic for uh, for a student presentation. Uh,
that the stereographic projections are uh, are conformal. So of course conformal. Well, here of course um, here uh, I'm uh, I measure angles with the uh, with the Riemann structure. I mean, in particular in in the point at infinity, right? Because because on C I know how to to measure angles. The thing is how to measure how do I measure angles between between uh, curves that cross at that cross at the point at infinity. Uh, I use the charts to, 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 to measure, right? So, 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 in other words, so, 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 to, to, so here I, I, uh, I use uh, the structure of Riemann surface in order to, 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 to define what it means, to, uh, uh, what measuring angles between curves means. Um, and then here we know how to do it, right? I mean, here we take two curves, then we just take take their derivatives in in R three, and the, the the angle that they form that's that's the angle, right? Well, if they if at the point of crossing. Um, okay. Well, let me uh, just give some proper credit. Um, so so throughout this uh, this explanation, you have been seeing um, these two images over here. Um, and actually, actually, uh, uh, they are meant to illustrate, uh, you know, the, this fact that, that uh, uh, circles go to circles under their stereographic projections. Um, uh, in, he, the, in this image, uh, well, uh, the, it's the situation of a circle passing through the North Pole and, uh, and a circle in C bar of the form um, straight line union infinity. And in this other one is the situation of a circle not passing through the North Pole and a circle in C. Uh, just with the, the, the kind of the difference, the difference between the stereographic projection considered here and here, and the one I'm considering is that uh, that the one I'm considering, in the one I'm considering, the, the complex plane um, uh, cuts, the, cuts the unit, cuts the sphere uh, in, in an equator, whereas uh, in these images the 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 plane of projection the the, the, the plane where uh, one is projecting is uh, is tangent to the sphere uh, so it's it's kind of a um, in, instead for for these two images instead of working uh, with the with the horizontal plane uh, you know with the xz plane uh, one one works with the with the horizontal plane at height minus one, so that's kind of the difference. That's kind of the only difference, which is a minor difference. Mm -hmm. Okay, but the proper the proper credit is that that uh, the, I did not make those images. So these those 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 two images, I uh, I took them from this uh, website of um, of uh, David Joyce. Um, so you can find it uh, here in this. Uh, in this address uh, okay so let us um, give a brief summary of uh, today's class so um, Um, so first of all, we introduced uh, C bar as the one point, point compactification of uh, C, and uh, we saw that it is a Riemann surface. So we provided a uh, a uh, complex atlas with only two charts, but a complex atlas nonetheless. Uh, then we uh, introduce uh, the complex projective line. Um, with the analytic uh, topology. Uh, and we gave a for a homeomorphism between these two. A homeomorphism.
algorithms with, with we call the phi b for each basis, right? So, so there is we get one homeomorphism for each basis. Or the basis of C square. Okay? Then we uh, spoke about the unit sphere and uh, we gave the stereographic projections. And then we saw that, um, that they were diffeomorphisms. Uh, and we saw that uh, that these uh, diffeomorphisms, in fact, send circles, send circles to circles. Um, That is more or less it, um, because uh, well, a student presentation. The student presentation then uh, consists in showing that these ones not only send circles to circles but are conformed. Um, what else should be said? Um, So maybe it would be a good exercise to think about giving a direct one-to-one -one correspondence between these two. And of course, trying to make the diagram commute. But, but kind of not, kind of try to do it naturally, not, not just, you know, like, okay, so, so they look, okay, compose these two. Right? Of course, I can't do that, but it would be nice to give a conceptual direct passage between both of them. Um, Then I think that's that's about it. Something something I would like you I, I want you to remember about this bijection, these homeomorphisms, which depend on this, is uh, is is these pictures, this one, and this one, um, and that that uh, the choice of basis of ordered basis somehow uh, tells you tells you which points are the one parameterized by the finite points of C, uh, which points of P one. Um, and which one is uh, is parameterized by infinity, namely, namely the, the subspace uh, spanned by the first member of the of the basis. That's that's the first thing. And then so so here somehow, uh, just like just like here, somehow in the end I put infinity. Here maybe I can do the same, but somehow here in the end I uh, I put infinity. Something like that. Okay, that's one thing and. Um, the, the other thing is, is, is the, that 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 that, uh, that kind of that we that 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 actually kind of schematically we can we can think that this picture is is valid not only uh, in the real numbers I mean not only for r square and the p one r but uh, schematically for c for c square and p one c as I said before when uh, by uh, by thinking of the complex plane like uh, like this one. Um, yeah, so so somehow somehow the point is that the, the, the bijection between C bar and P one C, what it does is it it it, it makes C sit at height one. That's that's kind of the point here here as well. Although of course at height one with respect to the given order basis. Um, so I think that's that's uh, it for uh, for the summary and for the first class.